and we just fucked him. So, Chief gave me an order. Mm -hmm. I just don't know if I should say something. Can this wait like ten minutes, maybe? <laughs> what if we just like start fixing things? Is there not a hammer emote? <laughs> hmm. Why does that look so crooked? <laughs> it's clean. Hello. What's up? <laughs> Ma'am, what are you doing? Miss. Oh, it's kind of dusty in here, don't you think? <laughs> you like cleaning? I mean, one thing I like cleaning is the streets, but you know, obviously, you don't want a dirty place, no? <laughs> of course. All right. Um, hello. I'm expecting you to be my PD interview applicant. Is that true? Uh, yes. Susie. Susie Fry. Susie Fry. Yep. And nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you, Susie. I'm Sam Bass, the chief of police. Nice to meet you. M Mr. Bass. Sorry. Nerves got me a little bit crazy right now, but I'm ready. You're moving a lot. Are you okay? Yep. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm fun. You need like a minute to like uh, collect yourself, maybe some food, water, anything like that. Does that help you? Uh, actually, I think I'll do just fine. All right, follow me then. Come on. All right. <laughs> what are the chances I click the wrong emo? It's like perfect timing. Good night, Lily. All right, time to close chat, guys. Sorry. Just kidding, it's this way. Oh, this way. Um, is it true that the floors of lava? Yeah, some way. man named Gunner said that I, I'm gonna, I guess, burn alive? Wait, what? What's it done? <laughs> the floor's lava! No, it's not. Are you sure what? it's not? Yeah, here, see? <laughs> yeah, I guess it looked pretty sturdy to me. Okay, take a seat. All right, <clears throat> are you ready to get started? Um, absolutely. Okay. All right, um, I'm just gonna turn oh, this oh, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. recording device right here. <laughs> All right, there you go. Wait, I'm not in trouble, am I? <laughs> no, you're applying for the PD, right? Oh, true, sorry, every time I see a recorder, I keep I don't know. I'm getting flashbacks. <laughs> what are you getting flashbacks from? Well, my daddy was an officer, and every time my mom did something incriminating, he would record her, so, you know. <laughs> what? Really? Your dad was never able to turn off his cop brain? Nope. Never. So, <laughs> Susie Fry, huh? Yeah, that's me. Are you okay? Are you okay with this being recorded? Uh, yes, sir. Perfect. All right. Well, let's get started. Uh, at this time, I'm going to be doing your PD interview. You're applying for the LSPD. Is that correct? Um, yes. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Today is March 30th, 2022. It is 5.16 p.m. Eastern. I'm the chief of police. Joined by, please state your name for the record. Um, Susan Fry. <laughs> All right. Perfect, Susie. Let's start off with the hard-hitting questions, shall we? All right. I'm ready. Why I'm hard as hell. Be... <laughs> why apply to be a police officer? Tell me why. Because I want to make sure that nobody ends up like my mom did. Dead and drugged up mom. on some street out of the middle of nowhere. Hoo-ha town. You know, I want to make sure that everybody's safe no matter what. So your mother, you have mommy issues. I mean, 
I guess you could say it like that. What happened exactly to your mother? She had herself a bit of a heroin addiction. But I... Drugs. Drugs are not good. They're bad. I hate really bad. drugs. Terrible, disgusting things. And how did your mother become an addict? Um, well, Pele and my dad was so busy being a copper, he didn't really pay much attention to us, so she found it elsewhere. <sighs> what is that supposed to mean? Um, she was a hooker. <laughs> your mother was a hooker. A hooker and a heroin addict. Jeffers, wouldn't it your mom, you know, doing the service? Um, no, but uh, back in Dallas, the cops used to make me pretend to be a prostitute to catch bad guys, but they'd only pay me like $100 per. So you're a Charlie item, basically. I was... Criminal foreman. Yes. <laughs> they make How me did you feel bend doing over. That kind of work? Oh, oh, yes. Um, I felt... I felt like I was doing something good. You know, just say, so that's gonna be you. A nice hundred dollars for that, sucky sucky. And next thing you know, uh, cops go in and pow, 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 pow. Oh, you know, they take care of everything. <laughs> Damn. All right. I understand there's actually, um, you know, an issue and uh, pandemic. And a pand Is it a pandemic? Yes, yeah, a pandemic. Um, of, you know, a rise in prostitution. So would you be able to dabble back into that if uh, we asked you? Yeah, absolutely. Look, the one number thing I want to do is make sure to be a service to not only Los Santos, but the whole police department. So whatever I need to do, I'll do it. Hmm. Okay. I like you so far. Keep it up. <gasps> um, why did you choose the LS, sweetie? Well, like I said, I, after growing up, seeing my dad do cop work, I kind of want to be, you know, be in the city and maybe help take care of, you know, issues in the city and also the south side or wherever is needed. Okay. So you want to make a difference, basically. Absolutely. Perfect. Tell me more about yourself and you where you came from. Well, I am from Dallas. I don't know if you've been there. Um, Once or twice, yes. As you know, you go a little towards Fort Worth, there's a very high chance you're going to get shot. And, you know, even though my dad was a cop, he didn't really make that much. So kind of grew up on the poor side. You know, saw mom get devil in drugs, get lost in that. Uh, found her dead at one point. And, uh, but, you know, that, that was, uh, that's over now. I'm just going to make sure I'm not like her and I'm going to be more like my father, if anything. What happened to your family? Why'd you come here? Uh, dad passed away, so I didn't really see I had much left over there. So why come here? I heard that there was a lot more opportunity, and also a lot more crime. I mean, the first man I met here to give me a taxi ride was telling me that there was people giving people with heroin needles to poke in your eye. I almost got murdered by that guy, Sakata. Um, murdered by another people. I also got thrown in the ocean by a chain gang, so, you know, I feel like they could use my help a bit. <laughs> what happened to you in one day? Well, last time I was awake, I got thrown in the ocean by a chain oh, gang. Oh, gotcha. Okay, I was about to say, <laughs> holy shit, what a roller coaster you had. My God. <laughs> yeah, um, you gotta be careful with Carter. He's a wife beater and he's a woman killer. <gasps> I've but heard. The good news will be, or <laughs> gonna be, or is be. Uh, is that one day, if you become a police officer, you can make that difference. You can play some behind <gasps> bars, and you can serve justice out there on the streets. That criminal scum, all of them. I can't wait to see cops. Uh, they're gonna, they're gonna make this place all clean, shiny, brand new. You know, oil it up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Um. Tell me something about you that makes you so unique versus other applicants. Why should we hire you? What is it you can bring to the table that nobody else can? Well, I would like to call myself much of a rag doll. Thing is, I can take a lot. Rag Unlike doll. some other people. Yeah, you know, whatever. You can take a beating. Absolutely. 
You know, I'm not somebody that gets uh, feelings hurt so easily. You know, if I got to do something, game. I'm going to do it. Absolutely. Is that something because you grew up in a pretty harsh environment or is that because you're a Southern girl? Well, even though I am quite a bit of a Southern belle, besides that, you know, the thing is, is when somebody's about to shoot you, you don't have time to say, but sir, I don't know if I should do that. You say, yes, sir, and you get it done. So you feel like you can bring the attitude. You can bring um, the, I'm going to get behind your back no matter what. I got thick skin. I can handle any beating. Because being a cadet does come with a lot of hazing at times. Being a cadet sometimes comes with a lot of bossing around. You are having a lot of superior officers tell you what to do. Is that something you're okay with? Absolutely. If it needs to happen, I'll do it. Or take why? it. Or take why? it. What do you, uh, oh wait, why? Why? Why because, listen to other people? Because if without a chain of command, you can't ever get anything done. You always got to have a yes man somewhere or else, you know, there's just no point of policing. Okay, let me ask you this. If I said to you, Susie, I don't like your hair. I want you to be bald like me. What do you say? What? Yes, sir. I mean, is that what you want me to do? Is this just a, a, an example? I'm asking you. Yes, I will shave it off. If I say, Susie, I don't like your southern accent. Fix it. Of course, whatever you want me to do. If I say, Susie, I need you to talk. Look, you're really, really upset. Do it now. Listen here, Mr. Officer. I'm just so upset right now that you can't even... I'm as hot-headed as a chili pepper on fire. Like that? Okay, if I say, Susie, try to calm somebody down, what do you do? Listen, I know that you've been having a hard day, but I'm not thinking you're a bad person. I'm sure we'll get through this. You're going to be just fine. Like that? If I, say, if I say, Susie, I need you to get a confession of somebody. Use any means possible. Go for it. All right, well, I mean, this has worked in the past. <laughs> oh, wow. You did something bad? Why don't you go ahead and... Tell me what that was again. And usually they fess up, eventually. <laughs> okay, Susie, you cannot be doing as a police officer. <laughs> well, you said to get a confession. <laughs> I was testing you. <laughs> I should answer this phone call. Hello. No, what changed about it? <laughs> what? Are you sure it's not a boy, Uni George? Are you sure it's not a DUG? Can you send? Can you send it to me so I can um, bring up the discussion with the you know the IT guy? Yeah, send me like email me like pictures. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, okay. Okay. Mm. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Okay. Now, do you understand as a police officer, you must have ethics and morals, right? Absolutely. Okay. Would you do something unethical to get a confession or, you know, maybe um, get evidence out of somebody? I would first probably ask a high-ranking officer if what tactics I'm using is okay. Before I, I'm you know, proceed. You, don't, don't, don't worry about the ranking officer. Say you can, you can, I can't, you can do it. Say, say you're allowed to do it. Say, say you're, you know, you're alone with a suspect and you're trying to get a confession for a murder case or you're trying to get um, evidence out of this person that you believe they're involved in the commission of a crime. Do you think it would be ethical or unethical to use other means and tactics to try to get a confession out of that person? What would you consider unethical in your standards? Uh, to me, being unethical is 
probably using, um, you know, a technique as in fabricating evidence, for example, saying that, hey, I have this like lab report that says your DNA is on the uh, crime scene um, that is forged completely, given to a suspect to say, whoa, okay, maybe they got me. And they start to believe the lie and the lie becomes the truth. And they start speaking. To me, that's completely unethical. And that's an, an, a clear example of uh, unethical practice. I would not uh, forge anything. I feel like that might be pushing it a little too far. But, you know, having a little lie without a, if they, especially if they don't have a lawyer with them, I mean, might as well give them off their boots a little bit and get them rattled so they can start talking a bit. But not to the point of where it's, you know, overboard. What is the most important thing to you? Well, I guess I never really thought about that one. But honestly, it would be making sure that, like I said, getting drugs off the street. One day, at least I hope. Hmm. Um, let's move on to hypothetical questions or scenarios that would happen on the field. Um, what I'm asking you here is not you know, yes or no. What I'm asking you here is not correct or incorrect. I'm trying to gauge your opinion on how you deal with something, okay? And use any previous knowledge that you've had in, in a field or any experience you had in the past to help you gauge the answer to this question, okay? So these questions are just to kind of gauge who you are as a person. That's all it is, all right? Fish? All right. Sounds good. Okay. So <laughs> let's say today is your first day, and I am taking you as my cadet and the chief of police, right? And I'm having a bad day. I'm mad, I'm angry, I'm broken, I'm hurt. And I want to take that anger and channel on somebody else because I'm pissed. So we're riding together. I pull over somebody on a traffic stop. And that person happens to be the guy that flirts with my girl. I'm like, son of a bitch. Holy shit, this is like a whole K-drama. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm like, sir, step the fuck out of the car now and he does he complies um and as soon as he does and it makes his way around the car to the other side of the sidewalk i pull out my nice stick and i start wailing at him attacking him with it <gasps> non-stop for no discussion wait what breaking his nose saying huh you want to talk to my girl like that huh you want to flirt with my girl this is the consequences what do you do I would try to I would try to pull you off as soon as I could and maybe calm you down a bit. If anything, especially said, Back off! I'm gonna grab you harder. I'm literally gonna take your bald head and grab it like you, a football Susie. and pull it all the way back. <laughs> I'm gonna fire you, Susie. You're a cadet. You're nothing to me. Back off. Well, I'm sorry, Will. Cadet also gotta look out for you at the end of the day. I don't care. <laughs> I'm sorry you don't care, but that's just how it is. If anything, I would try to save the, the citizen and maybe get him on his way, or I would just need to calm what you down you as much as I about could. At that point, your job, your uh, career, your longevity as a police officer, or saving that person who's being beaten and attacked viciously. You know, as much as being a police officer is important to me, at the end of the day, it is just to protect, you know, citizens and if they need to get protected i gotta do what i gotta do okay so you would risk your career as a police officer as a law enforcement officer to save somebody else's life absolutely you know it's hard to say that i'm not gonna lie but I just know in my gut that's something I would probably do. <sighs> okay. You like cleaning, right? Absolutely. I love everything nice and clean. Okay. All right. Let's change it up a little bit. This time, I catch this guy doing a crime. He's like breaking into a car. Like uh -huh. that scummy criminal. It's <laughs> my time to shine. It's time for payback. <laughs> so I take him down to Mr. PD. You and I, uh, you know, we arrest him for breaking and entering into a car, right? We take him down to Mr. PD. 
And I think to myself, well, only two of us down here. And this guy has been an asshole to me. And he's really pissing me off. Maybe it's time to inflict pain. So I ask you and say, hey, go down to the trash locker. Go grab me any gun you see and bring it back. What do you do? Do see? Susie! Susie? Oh, she crashed? Oh my god, dude. Dude, I can already feel it. Um, Pink's character, Susie, is gonna be amazing. Amazing. I was talking to her and she was saying that she wanted to play cop before Krim, actually, a long time ago. So, I'm really happy to give her an opportunity to play cop. I think she's gonna be an amazing character. She's gonna, be, she's gonna be somebody who's really fun to play role to role play with, and um, everybody will love her for sure. Everybody will love her. She's very talented, super talented. She could do any voices. She's really great. So, her and Crystal or Pierre are the best. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Are you okay? Oh, absolutely. My my brain froze. If that makes sense. Uh oh. Do you eat ice cream? Yeah, I think so early I did. What flavor? Strawberry. Well, Mexican vanilla with strawberries. Oh, I love Mexican vanilla. Oh my god. All right, uh, let's go back to it. <clears throat> okay. All right. Uh, where were we? I was asking you about cleaning. Do you remember that part? Uh, yes. I asked you. Do you like cleaning? Um, of course I do. Like I said, I shot and knew, you know, if God's going to see it one day, then, or, you know, your, your body, your temple, whatever it says, I can't remember. Yeah, your body is your temple. Treat it as such. Yep, 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 all clean. What's your favorite cleaning product? Mm, maybe bleach. Mm. Have you ever drank bleach before? Mm, no, actually, I haven't. Don't try it, trust me. Trust me, Wait, what? Okay. Anyways, um, so like I was saying, uh, we catch this person who um I had an issue with, uh, who was um, you know, uh, flirting with my girl. God damn it! Hold on a second. Am I answering this phone call? Hold on. Uh, we catch this person who's flirting flirting with my girl, and um, we uh, decide to arrest him and bring him down to Michelle PD. And I think to myself, it is time to inflict pain on this person because they've treated me. They've been an asshole, and they've been disrespectful, been talking a lot of shit, and on top of it, they're trying to ruin my relationship. So I'm going to inflict pain and suffering on them. So I tell you, Susie, go down to our trash locker. Don't let anybody see you. Go grab whatever gun you can and bring it back over here. What do you do? I would have to say no. What if and I then say, I would probably also what have what, to what if I, ask what's, another... Go ahead. Go ahead, sorry. Probably have to ask another officer to help me intervene, cause oh, I'm not Susie. sure in that sit. You're an op. You would snitch on the chief of police. Absolutely. <laughs> Look, the reason Susie. I'm an officer is cause I always make sure that. What's but I'm your boss. You don't care about that. Where's the respect, the chain of command? Where was that speech you had about the chain of command, Susie? Huh? Where was that? Where'd it go? Well, I also know that there's things that could be unethical, like killing a man. Mm. Especially if you were just beating him with a knot stick. Well, no, this is a different scenario, right? So this time... Oh. I'll, yeah, so instead of um, the traffic stop, I'm trying to say, is this time we arrested him and we brought him back to Mishra PD, right? So I haven't attacked him so far, but I plan on attacking him. by Having you go get that gun from the evidence locker, the trash locker, so I can use it on him. Hmm. Well, if I knew you were going to use it on him, absolutely not. But if I didn't, of course, I'd have to say yes, because you're asking me to do something. Okay. So I get the gun. I say, thank you, Susie. Thank you for the gun. Now, watch. Actually, no. I don't want you to watch. I want you to turn around and face the wall. Then, I'm going to brandish that gun 
and aim at the suspect and shoot him in the face. Not once, <laughs> not twice, but three times. And I say, Susie, look, go get a broom and clean it and pick up the casings and I'll take care of the body. What do you do? I would have to tell another officer. <gasps> I know I am a snitch. I'm sorry. <laughs> if I know something's wrong, I gotta say something. I'm starting to send some flopping energy from you. <laughs> flopping energy? <sighs> I mean, like I said, if I will always say yes, sir, and not ask questions. But if I know deep down in my gut something ain't right, I gotta say something. Mm. Okay. And... That would come with the cost of you losing your job because I'll do everything I can to say, Susie, do not get in my path. If you do, I will destroy you. Well, I mean, you kind of couldn't because you'd probably be in prison for murder. Mm. Susie, do you think everything's black and white in Los Santos? No. Do you think there's always um, sunshine and rainbow everywhere you go? One thing I learned is absolutely not. Right. Sometimes justice is spelled differently for a lot of people, right? And law is not L-A-W. It's just W. Well, I mean, there are some things that are black and white, like you can't steal a car, you know, murdering's pretty bad. In a way, it is a little black and white, but there are some circumstances, I assume. <sighs> Yeah. All right. Um, do you have any questions for me so far regarding this interview? Anything that you want to bring up or ask? Why are you a cop? That's a really good question. I became a cop because, um, well, first of all, it was kind of a kind of family thing. Uh, I came from a family of military and, um, you know, police officers. So... I was kind of pushed that way, and it was kind of the sheer expectation out of me. Then um, I realized that, hey, being a police officer, I can make a difference. I can have an impact, and I can change people's lives through dialogue and through interaction and through doing the right thing. Being a police officer comes with a lot of responsibilities and power, right? You can really change somebody's yes. perspective about how they see things when you interact with them and what you decide to do. And that, to me, um, that power, I, I take it very seriously as far as channeling in a, in a right direction because I want people to, um, you know, understand that, hey, things can be better. Just because you're having a dark moment right now and it feels like you're drowning or the world is falling apart, it doesn't mean it's the end of the world. It doesn't mean things have to stay, stay the way they are. There's always, you know... A silver lining? Yeah, I mean, there's always darkness before dawn, right? So, that's how I see it. Well, I like your reasoning. I've done some bad things in my past. I'm not sure if you know what I've done or not, but I like to be transparent with my past because it's who I, it, it makes me, it's, I mean, it, it changed who I am today. Just, you know, it made me the man I am today, right? However, your past doesn't mean that's who you are today, right? Because the person in the past is the same person who's up here talking to you. Because that person died for this person to be born. Well, I guess I'm not much of a phoenix myself because I never had no criminal past. I always try to get straight in line. Always. I will warn you, being a police officer is not an easy job. It comes with, um, uh, you know, a lot of territory. A lot of uncharted territory that I'm not sure you're familiar with. And a lot of people will dislike you. A lot of people will hate you because of what you wear and the badge you have on your chest every single day. Because to them, you represent the opposition. To them, you represent, um, you know, being a blockade in their path. But I don't let that get to me because I know, you know, deep down inside, I'm doing the right thing. And if you understand that and you bring that attitude every single day and you don't allow the negative to shadow the positive, then you will not have any issue being a police officer and thriving the PD. Well, you know how, like, he spelled L-A-W. I always make sure to have a, so, you know, I have no problems taking a, having a capital L in my law, you know? 
And there's nothing wrong with that, okay? There's so many different styles of policing. As long as you get to the end goal and you make a difference and you're doing the right thing, I will never hold it against you. And I will always try my best, you know? Even if I fail at something, I'm going to try harder next time. And at the end of the day, you can only do what you can and that's your best, right? Of course. And so far from talking to you, um, I think you're going to make a great fifth of PD. Um, so at this time, I'm going to um, actually do you have any more questions for me before I uh, wrap this interview. Oh, what is the chain of command look like exactly? So the way it works in the LOSPD um, is you have a cadet, which would be would be you if you get hired. Um, and as a cadet, you're not fully hired in a PD. You're basically like on a trial basis. So you have to basically pass the cadet phase to become a full officer. Once you become a full officer, you become a full time employee in the PD. Followed by a senior officer, then corporal, then sergeant, then lieutenant, captain, um, as chief, assistant chief of police, and then chief of police. Oh, well, that's a bigger, long order than I was expecting. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of moving parts and pieces, right? The PD is pretty big, especially now. Well, hopefully I can find my place somewhere. You'll have me, you know, of course. I might do some already redemption RP. I mean, based on this interview, I think you left some really good impressions on me. So, um, I'm sure we can find a place for you. Wait, really? Absolutely. Well, I'm going to try my best. 100%. Ain't nothing that, you know is going to stand in my way. And if it does, uh, I'll just try harder over and over until I, I, I knock Tuesday. it down. Tuesday. Just be yourself. Yes. Be who you are. Be true to yourself. That's all I care about, okay? Right. I'm not asking to change you. I'm not asking to um, have a different Susie in the PD. I'm asking for Susie Fry to be part of the LSPD. That's all. Well, thank you, sir. I really appreciate that. Okay. All right, so um, at this time, um, you are approved. You are going to go on a waiting list, meaning as soon as there's a spot that opens up, which should be within a couple days, I'll say two, three days, because we're pushing a couple people solo. Then we'll give you an onboarding process where you'll get on duty, get onboarded, get the tags, get the access uh, key cards and the keys to um, all the stations, and they'll walk you through the SOPs, all right? Thank you so much. Yes, of course. All right. Do you have any questions, comments, concerns for me before I wrap it up? I think that's about it. Okay. Okay, dokie. Awesome possum. All right. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Well, I really appreciate you, sir. No, I, thank you so much for the opportunity. I won't let you down. Kick this recording. Ugh. All right. You know, son. Somebody's blowing my phone. Hello, Mr. Buddha. Hello? Hey, man, so you guys just going to let uh, them fly blimps wherever they want and vandalize all these billboards, or are you guys going to do something about it? Because I remember when we were campaigning and we flew blimps throughout the city, you motherfuckers shot us down for flying. Uh, okay, what's so, the way out of here? Uh, follow me, miss. Sorry, I was uh, doing a PD interview. No, that should not be happening. If they're flying at dangerous levels and they're vandalizing... Yeah, go in front of the building. vault, cocksucker. Okay, I'll pull out air one and handle it myself right now. Just let me uh, let me walk up this all person. All right, I got to take a phone call in my head. I got to right. go. Somebody else drive real quick, boys? Pull me out the car. 